I'm at home. <gasps> Shooby doo, I'm home. Hello, I'm back home. Shooby doo, I'm home. Hello, and this is hot and steamy. Cause we're eating McDonald's feast. Yay! I am so excited. Welcome to my brand new mukbang channel. This is the third one and the last one. Third time's the charm, hopefully. So actually it just got monetized yesterday. And so I'm making a video. Now I have to wait 48 hours to see what I get paid. I hope third time's the charm because I'm not making another one. I said that, we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I need a vlog channel, I need a tea time drama channel, I need lots of channels, but today we are feasting on McDonald's, and I really have to get to these fries while they're still fresh. You're like, Nick, why do you even get French fries? Come on now. Why do you even get fries? You don't even like fries. I like them when they're hot. Mmm. That's correct. That's a correct assumption. You guys, I got a free milkshake. Okay, future yourself, don't eat a French fry in the middle of the introduction. <gasps> Can't even breathe. Cheeseburger number one, cheeseburger number two, cheeseburger number three, cheeseburger number four. These Big Macs have no pickles. Thank you, Eric the Electric. And extra sauce. Thank you, Nikocado Avocado. Oh, and I also got a quarter pounder with bacon. And I got lots of sauces. And I've never had the McDonald's signature sauce ever. I don't think I have. If I have, it's been a long time. So. We're gonna do signature sauce, french fries, double cheeseburgers, Big Macs, quarter pounders, and a vanilla milkshake. Oh, look at this. Ooh, and it was free. So grab some food. I have a story I would like to share today. So if you like the talking and the eating, this is the perfect video for you. So let's get everything set up for my video and let's begin. I'm so happy you're here. Let's go. Bam. <gasps> Wow, I'm back home. Shoo up, shoo up, I'm home. Look at my fries. Mmm. Mmm. The only way, mmm. I'm so excited. My free milkshake. Cheers to a wonderful eating show. Mmm. Oh. Mm. Let's have a classic cheeseburger together. I'm so excited. Hi, this is a friendly reminder for those of you who watch me because of my talking and my stories and all of my commentary. Please skip on over to the 24 minute mark. The first 20 minutes is me chowing down a lot of this food because I'm starving. <laughs> if you like to watch that, go ahead and watch that. But a lot of the chit chat comes at 24 minutes. Look at this. It was two for two. Two for two. No pickles. Mmm. Without the pickles, it's good. Okay. Today, I have to talk about how I almost got expelled from my school. Because I did bad things. Mmm. So this was kindergarten, all the way back to kindergarten. Maybe I can flash a photo, because I am here at my parents. I might find some cute little photos. I pulled down the fire alarm. Mm-hmm. Because I wanted to see what would happen. Mm-hmm. The only thing that happened was I went to the principals. Big, <clears throat> Big Mac with extra sauce. This is all gonna fall down. Big Mac with extra sauce. Here we go. This is very saucy. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Another time, we went to the zoo. Mm. 
This is the first time. And when we're going to see the bear, this was in Maryland, by the way. I started going like this in the little fence, do 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 do, and the bear, the bear came. There goes my broker. The bear came running, rawr, and all the kids started screaming, and it was really distracted by my finger. It, you know how that's like a fence, and they have like little triangles, shapes. I was just went like this, do 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 do. The bear did not like that. Now that was that my fault. Well, at the Catholic school, yes, it was. The Catholics had the final word, and they said it was bad. This is a delicious looking quarter pounder with bacon. No, it's the quarter pounder deluxe. This is my first time ever having a quarter pounder deluxe. That looks great. That looks great actually. You know what's funny? Oh, I dripped a lot over here. Oops. Liz didn't get on my shirt. You know what's funny? I think Sonic's better. I think Sonic's better. Okay, so. Welcome to my new channel. I have a YouTuber I'm going to be exposing soon. I'm just waiting to see if she has any final words to give me. And I've been holding it in for a little bit. Their signature is not, their signature sauce is not as good as the Sonic signature sauce. Mm. That's really good. I would love to compare milkshakes from Sonic versus McDonald's. Let's do more quarter pounder. So yeah, I want to expose her. It's personal. She's a YouTuber. She's probably watching this video, for all I know. Or maybe she's not, because she's scared. She got caught. And you don't stand a chance up against me. <laughs> you, you really don't. Because I pay attention to things. I notice things. And I've been talking to some, to some of her friends. She's been telling me a completely different story she's been telling me. I feel like a detective. I'm sorry, I know you guys like ketchup on your fries. I like ranch. Oh, a big hunk of them. Mmm. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that. I've, oh, so those were actually two separate Big Macs. Did I eat it all? I ate a whole Big Mac already? Wow. <laughs> that went by fast. Here's my second one. And I just stacked them on top of each other to look pretty. These had to be 60 cents for extra sauce. <sighs> 60 cents for extra sauce. It doesn't seem much saucier than a regular. Oh, here's my Big Mac, okay. 
Or is it? Oh. Mmm. Did I get three Big Macs? Did I get three Big Macs? I know I ate a burger already, the whole thing. Here's the quarter pounder. Can I tell you too? I feel like my parents are doing me such a favor by letting me Orlin chill out here while we figure out what to do with our lives. <clears throat> We kind of just barged in, not barged. They never come down to the basement anyway, except to do laundry once a week. <laughs> Seriously, and my room's always been here. I turned into storage unit, I told you. That always happens. Actually, the whole house seems like a storage unit. Mm. Oh, oh. Seriously, doing me such a favor. I've been looking at tickets to go to New York on the train. Mm. To go with Orlin. Where would be a good place to meet some people? Bryant Park, maybe? The High Line, maybe? Maybe somewhere in Brooklyn. So we're looking at train tickets. They're not too bad. They're really not. You know what's funny though? It's cheaper to fly than to ride trains nowadays. Oh my God, speaking of airplanes, let's say this really quickly because we're eating. Bleh. Excuse me. So you know that missing flight Malaysia Airlines? Well, the one from 2014. Last night, I was up for a half hour. It took a half hour to read the article. It was a long article. It was by The Atlantic. Isn't that kind of ironic? It didn't crash into The Atlantic, but if you don't know anything about it, just Google Malaysia Airlines Atlantic article. It's a very good read. It tells you everything you need to know that I'm not going to sit here and tell you. But remember, it's been kind of a mystery. Did a government hijack the engine and make it go a different place? Was it landed in Russia and they just killed all the people there and staged this to cover up what they were doing in Ukraine? Was this an alien abduction? What did it go into a black hole? Like, people have been speculating, coming up with conspiracy theories for years. Well, some new information has come out to show that it was the pilot, most likely, who did this. And Malaysia government was not cooperative to help share these details about the, the pilot, which would have changed the whole course of this investigation. Not because they knew something and they were trying to hide it, it was because they were embarrassed and they just didn't want anything to happen. They want to just go away. You think people forget? Never. So that was a bad move on Malaysia government. If you're from Malaysia, I love Penang. I've been to Kuala Lumpur for Kuala Lumpur, not like walking around, but changing airlines. But I've been to Penang three times. Penang's great. I would love to see more of Malaysia. Mm. I like Malaysian food. This is a double cheeseburger. Another cheeseburger. I'm feasting today. I'm so sorry. I'm eating like I've never eaten before. Cheers to a flat average burger. <laughs> Honey mustard.
what happened was the pilot to prevent an uproar in the cabin of panic and chaos he flew the plane which the detectors show he did above 40,000 feet into the air which would have depressurized the cabin and it would have killed everyone knocked them all out while still strapped in their seats and as they were going up the oxygen oxygen masks would have fallen down which are great for when the plane's falling or you know 11,000 feet oh no mayday mayday but when you're going that high those oxygen masks are not going to save you and so what happened was people put them on their faces they knew something was wrong they kept going higher and higher and higher the planes have a limit if they go too high people die and they all just dangled there and their lifeless bodies with oxygen masks and they all got killed luckily it was not super painful and it wasn't like explosive it was kind of just like they stopped living so that's kind of good to think about i guess and the captain had put his own oxygen mask which worked for him and i forget why it worked for him but it explains it in the article oh no the captain turned off the oxygen mask or something like that anyway it's just so haunting everyone fears air airplanes even though they're pretty safe they really are. They're the safest way to travel. It's just scary. To be that high up in the air, let's change the subject now. <laughs> mm. So Orlin just filmed a durian video for his channel. A durian mukbang. So everyone, if you support my husband and you've been over there, his last mukbang has 100,000 views, basically. Last time I checked, it said like 91, 90 something. I think it said 90. By now, it's probably at 100,000 views. Brand new channel, just started it. Thank you to everyone who's been watching him, leaving kind comments, and everyone has been saying, we'll watch you eat fruit, Orland. We'll watch you eat your fruits. Well, will you? So we're doing a test. By we, I mean, I'm a little involved. Excuse me, I like to set up the, the lights and the camera angle for him. Help him with the thumbnail to make it look good. But he does the rest. He edits. He actually is the one who does the thumbnail. His is just raw and real. He doesn't even like change the thumbnail at all. Anyways. Oh my god. You know how much I love that thing. Durian. He ate it this morning for breakfast. I was so jealous. So jealous. Speaking of Malaysia, they grow a lot of durian in Malaysia. We happen to like the Thailand ones. The season's kind of over already, I think. I think it was mid-May. Wow, I'm a pig. Look at me. Mmm. Look at me. Oops. I need to finish House of Cards. We've started it. Unfortunately, I spoiled it for, spoiled it for myself because we were on four seas, four episodes, me and Orlin watching it together. And I remember when it came out a year or two ago, everyone was complaining, Kevin Spacey, blah, blah, blah. They ended it terribly, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, so now I'm on episode five. I'm about to start it with him. I'm thinking like, it's great. I'm loving it. It's actually really good. Suspenseful. Well, apparently it's going to go down here, downhill from here. So I'm not looking forward to that. And there's only like nine episodes in the whole season. What's a Netflix show you can recommend to me? People have told me when I did live streaming on you now, a lot of my viewers told me about the Haunted Hill, the house on Haunting Hill. 
And I read the reviews of that. And let me tell you, I have never seen such raving reviews about anything. It has better reviews than Titanic. I mean, it is amazing how people are just mar marveled over the cinematography, the directing, the acting, the storyline. Apparently it has some great scares. And people who don't like, excuse me, scary movies still like this. They'll put up with the scary scenes because it's so well done. I mean, oh, I got goosebumps reading some of these reviews. I'm a sucker for reviews. I'm one of those people who can read every review on Amazon before I purchase something. It's terrible. I have a very hard time making decisions. Every review was raving about this TV show. Netflix show, excuse me. Oh, this is naughty. Mmm. Mm. Naughty. So, I think we're going to watch that. But what else? I think there's a show called Shattered. I like psychological thrillers, like House of Cards. You don't know where it's going to turn. I don't like funny TV shows. I mean, I do, if I'm in the mood for it. I love Family Guy. But I'm more often, I'm a very serious person. I know I'm funny on camera and I show my funny sides, but I'm also very serious. I love Judge Judy. I love watching Law & Order SVU. I love um, mysteries. I like shows that shock you. Unexpected. Unpredictable. A turn for the worst. Ooh, love that type of stuff. Ooh. So if you can recommend something to me, I'm enjoying the french fries right now. That would be great. Hmm. I don't know. I do not know what I want to watch next. Besides, The Hunting Hill Show. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I'm so happy. Shout out to my viewer, Megan. Hello. Ooh, that hurt. She sent us a dumping steamer to my P.O. box when I used to have one two years ago. I know. Everyone's asking for me to open a P.O. box again. I don't know where I'm going to live. I don't know what I'm going to do. Megan, I used your dumpling steamer this morning. Well, afternoon. When Orlin was done with his durian video, he went over there to the laundry room where we cook. Because the kitchen's a mess and other people use it and we just want to be out people's way, you know, and it's nice that we can do this downstairs. There's a utility sink right next to the washer and the dryer. I'm looking right at it. Anyways, and um, he steamed me some salmon and broccoli and cauliflower. <gasps> Excuse me. I've had pressure cooked, like broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, vegetables. It always has this bad burnt flavor. I've had like boiled broccoli, but then eh, a lot of the flavor goes away. Steaming, and not in a pressure cooker, but in those pressure in those um, wooden bamboo little things. Oh my God, love the flavor. The salmon, I mean, that's a healthy, I mean, the Japanese steam everything. That's a healthy way to eat your fish. Just steam it. Actually, people in Thailand do it too. I think it's very common all in Southeast Asia. Follow my Instagram at Nikocado Avocado, and if you do, I might just follow you back.
I mean, dumpling steamers are Chinese and Korean. Well, more Chinese. Dim sum. I think the Asians love those steamers. I love those steamers. So, thank you, Megan, for sending that to me a long time ago. We're finally using it to death, and we love it. <laughs> love, love, love it. Shout out to Velo Pale, who sent me eyelashes. I need to start wearing eyelashes in my videos. Maybe not on this channel, because, you know, kids. <laughs> I'm joking. I don't know. Why is it? Why can't kids see that? It makes me so upset. Mr. Ratburn from Hey Arth Arthur. Did you hear about that? He, it's a TV show. It's a cartoon on PBS. I mean, that is the children of the children's show. PBS is the... Oops, this is about to die. PBS is known for the best and most appropriate TV shows for kids. Not Cartoon Network with all that violence and hair pulling and pow, pow, pow. Um, PBS, right? Well, the writers, which I think was a great decision, decided to make the teacher be openly gay, not talk about being gay. They didn't even say the word gay, as far as I know. Mr. Ratburn just got married to a man, his partner. And Mr. Ratburn is a rat. See, they're all little characters. There's Muffy the Muppet, or something. There's Arthur the Aardvark. There's Brain the Bear. There's Bunny the... There's Baxter the bunny. So they're all little animals. Anyway, so he got married to his man and like no one like was like, ew. And I was like, yeah, we're so happy for him. Just trying to normalize or show that there's a, there's no difference other than that the fact that it's a different gender. Like there's no other difference. What a wedding is supposed to be for. Celebrating love, blah, blah, blah. Well, Alabama decided to ban that show from its state. It won't air it on TV anymore. If you're from Alabama, do you think that's a good thing? I mean, do you agree with that? I just say, banning it from TV isn't going to change a darn thing. That's not going to get rid of gay people in this world. It's like the people who refuse to have black characters on TV. There were some channels and networks that refused to do to integrate. Integrate, yeah. Did that stop anything from happening? No. Oh, but the children, but the children. Well, I think children are more accepting of gay marriage than ad adults. They aren't told all this information to sway them to believe one thing over another. I think it's very easy and logical for a child to be like, oh, they like each other. The end. It's none of my business what they do, you know? I'm loving the fries today, wow. Let's finish this. The thing about Big Macs is the sauce is sweet, which is nice, but then it makes me like, ugh, too much. Yeah. I'm starting to get sick by it. Ooh. I'm starting to get over McDonald's. To be honest with you, especially now that I compared it to Sonic. Everything about Sonic tastes better. Everything. That quarter pounder I just had. That could easily be outbeat with a Dairy Queen burger. With a Smash burger with a Whopper. I don't know, I'm starting to get over McDonald's. The fries are only good if they're fresh. These are not as fresh, but they're still okay. Their chicken nuggets are better than Burger King, but I think Wendy's is pretty much identical. I need to test those, I need to know. This is a lot of sodium, by the way. I don't care, do you? <laughs> I don't care, do you? My body will care in a minute. Eat my vegetables. Drink my lemon water. Get this salt out of me. Ooh. 
So anyways, yeah, it's like, that's not gonna make gay people disappear. It's not going to really do that much. Yeah, you're in more control. No, the kid didn't see it. They're gonna go to school and have gay friends. They're gonna have their own teacher who's gay. It's kind of like trying to protect the children from something that's not a bad thing to them, doesn't affect you in your life. Because why? I don't know, religion, I guess. That's really what it comes down to. I don't know about you, but. <clears throat> My God, wouldn't it want me to dictate how other people can live their lives? I don't think that's right. If there's truly an issue with it, I'll take it up with God when I die. Peace. What are you going to do about it? Kill me? Commit a crime? And violate the first sin, the, the first offense, thou shalt not kill. You know what I mean? It's like, I'll take it up with God. Bye. If it's, if it's even an issue. And if it is, oh wow, I'll be dead. <sighs> Anyways. I'm obsessed with this psychic. His name is Craig Hamilton Parker. Remember I used to talk about the Psychic Twins? Well, I still like them. I just don't... They don't really make exact predition, predictions. They're very vague sometimes. And they haven't made one about 2019. They said, like, the happy things, but I'm waiting for the sad things. Okay, good. <clears throat> one step closer to fighting AIDS. Yay. What? One, one step closer to... Excuse me. Ahem. <clears throat> I'm waiting for the, the bad stuff, okay? And they never made one. They never made a predictions video or anything. They made their, their official post, but it's vague. There will be terrorist attacks. There will be a hurricane. There will be a tornado. Do you guys follow any psychics? What I like about this Craig Hamilton Parker, he's from the UK. They're very specific. And he does get things wrong, but he also gets things dead on. And it's scary. Very scary. Actually, the most recent one I can think of is he made a prediction last year, which I remember watching, saying that one of the U.S. ships, an oil carrier, will be attacked. And it's not going to be that big of a deal. It's not going to lead to a world war, a world war. but someone in the Middle East is going to claim it. He may have even said Iran or Iraq or some, some, somewhere over there. And it happened just like, what, two days ago? And as soon as I saw it on my Twitter, I was like, oh my god, he said that. <gasps> oh my god. He has predicted so many things dead on. It's scary. It's amazing. He also said things that didn't come true. He said there was going to be jet fighters, which he, he says psychics, a true psychic. They're not going to tell you a date, a time, a location. They're little images and messages they get through dreams, through meditation, through channeling, spirits. And you can't ask you're given okay so sometimes you're given things that don't have much context clues you're, you're provided imagery that suggests that this prediction is going to take place and all you see is one little boop de boop i mean and it's kind of like vague and you don't know if that, is that for this year is that for two years from now well um one of them which hadn't happened and it's a good thing these are also terrible events he said that um, jet fighters would be crashing into buildings, and he says they didn't look like buildings. They almost looked like towers, like mosques, um, like what they, they pray from at the, t at the tower. He said it looked like that, or they could have been bridge supports. He said it was a fuzzy dream, but he got it a few times. Bridge supports, some kind of bridge for suspension, and jet fighters went into them. That didn't happen. He predicted that like two years ago. He predicted Donald Trump. He predicted the Mueller report. He predicted... He actually says... Now, I'm sorry if this is bad news to you, but he says that Donald Trump will win his second term and will be re-elected. There'll be lots of impeachment attempts. None will go through. Oh. 
I just find him fascinating. I don't know. He predicted the car, the car automobile, the automobile industries deals. He predicted Brexit. He predicted. It's amazing. And they're very specific. Again, not super specific. Like, here's the day, here's the time, here's the person. Something I'm kind of waiting for, which again, this is awful to say you're waiting for, but he said that he sees this year or next year a very, very crazy suicide. A pack of two famous people who kill themselves together or back to back. And it's going to come out that they planned it together and it's going to haunt the whole world. Very, very, very famous people. I don't know who. He doesn't know who. He didn't say, you know, were they black, were they white, were they in Europe or were they American? Maybe he did say if they were American, but he just said celebrities. It's going to be a two pack. And he saw that. He predicted a lot. He predicted a, um, a terrorist attack plan that was going to happen at the Vatican on Christmas, which you would think, okay, that happens every year, but it really doesn't. And then he said the plot will be foiled, meaning like that they got caught and they didn't actually go through. They, the the CIA, the advanced intelligent programs who, you know, monitor our Facebooks and our computers and our text messages and our phone calls and, um, you know, the people who are looking out for bad people. They caught them, and he said that would happen, and it did. I think it looks like it's been said that too, but. Maybe I just like it because he has a British accent. Check him out. He has a YouTube channel. He does a whole world predictions. He does updates. And just two days ago, he did an update one about Donald Trump. And, um, interesting. He says that Putin has information on, I mean, we could kind of speculate and be like, well, this is probably likely so. Putin has the Russian president has some information on Donald Trump of his business dealings before he was elected president that he has knowledge of that Donald Trump tried to cover up back in the day and it would come to haunt him and that's why he is very receptive and um, you know what I mean but anyways You guys know me, I get very paranoid from psychic stuff. I think that's why I stopped watching the Psychic Twins, because they made me scared. And maybe I should stop watching him, too. It's not just them. Oh! Isn't that weird, huh? They purposely put out a positivity predictions for 2019. And I didn't like it, because I wanted to hear the bad stuff. Yet the bad stuff makes me scared and paranoid. You can't win. Sometimes, us humans, we like to walk straight into the hole on purpose <laughs> like just deliberately make myself upset <laughs> because curiosity hmm i'm literally you know i'm eating all of this wow someone stop me mm. oh that's good i have a surprise for nick Megan, are you still watching? <laughs> Look, it's your lid. <gasps> oh, it's like a chef. Ah, oh, thank Enjoy. you. Healthy. We got some more broccoli cauliflower. Oh, is that a chili pepper? No. That's uh, just a sweet oh, this pepper. is paprika and uh, oh, sweet pepper. No, that's cayenne pepper too. Cayenne pepper. I see lots of olive oil. Mm. Oh, that's spicy. I am pepper. Ooh. Let's move this out the way. Uh, okay, you guys. So, thank you, baby. <clears throat> that was so sweet. That was really spicy. Um, I wish Craig would make more videos. Oh, wait, no. It's healthy. <laughs> I can't even help it. I'm like, mmm, delicious. Hand goes to french fry. Someone please comment that. Go ahead. Roast me. There's a channel who keeps roasting me. 
They're called tea spill. No, not tea spill. Um, guilt tea, tea guilt, spill, spill guilt tea. I don't know. Yeah, Jeffree Star is their thumbnail though. He's rolling his eyes back. And they've made like a million videos of mukbangers. They're known for. Well, they're not known for it, but they've made this person, male or female. Is it another YouTuber? We found out Shookbang was an ASMR channel. Who's running this channel? Well, I'm never, like, the favorite. <laughs> you know, me and Zach and Stephanie and Zach, well, I'm not very good looking in that. Or me and Stephanie, well, I'm not good looking in that. Or me compared to uh, everyone, uh, you know. Well, I like it. <clears throat> Go ahead and roast me. It is okay. And here's a smart way to look at it too, which Veronica should have done. It's free publicity. It brings traffic to your channel. I guarantee someone who knows someone else it's this video's recommended to them. They watch it. They're like, this guy's crazy and bizarre. And what do you do? You type in his name to go watch him or follow him because you want to see that bizarre stuff. I mean, this is like a never ending shout out. I love it. You know, that's how you should think about it. Not, oh, they called me stupid. Well, not call. They don't even talk. They just show the clips and the viewer has to decide for themselves. But clearly I'm stupid. <laughs> so, excuse me. Here we go. Vegetables, healthy, steamed. Yeah, so, I shouldn't feel bad, like, oh, I'm being roasted. Because I'm the one who put it out there, you know? If you take all my worst terrible moments and put them side by side, I look like a lunatic. But I think anyone would, truly, if they recorded their worst moments, their farts, their burps, spilling their food, wearing wigs, wearing weaves, wearing hijabs, Cursing, saying all this crazy things. Okay, not not everyone does does that, but people do have moments. They just don't record it. I do, for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> um, I feel like everyone's worst moments would look bad to anyone who you know didn't know them, didn't watch them, didn't know the context, and they would assume, oh, this is how how they are. Meanwhile, I have a thousand videos of me being normal. You know what I mean? So I don't really. I just thought of it because I just watched another one of their videos today. Cringe, cringe, cringe. I know, you don't have to tell me. But I like it. I don't mind it. I don't view it as hate and I think it's, if I'm upset by it, well, whose fault is that? Mine, because I put it out there. I just view it as publicity. <laughs> Go ahead. I love it. I really want to buy a car, so please <laughs> help me buy my car. Uh, I actually, on this channel, I still don't know what my CPM is. I have to wait 48 hours. The next video I make on this channel, I let you know. I'll probably find out. I'll be very excited for that. And I hope it's good. I hope it's about time. I mean, say what you want about me, but I hustle. I hustle and I have never given up. I've almost given up, but I didn't. I filmed even in the hospital. I filmed on depression. I filmed a deportation. I still grabbed the camera and I showed up to work. Despite the worst moments of my life. You know what I mean? Like I hustle. Not to say other people don't. We're just talking about me. I do. Oh, so I don't know. I feel like now's my time to finally get paid right. I deserve a car. Come on. I've been doing this for three years. I don't know. Is that too much to ask the YouTube gods? Please bless me <laughs> with a good advertiser. Because we don't get any say in that. I hope you know. I don't get to decide what ads play on here. I have no idea. Or how much they take, how much cut I get. So anyways, I can't wait to stop talking about it because I've been talking about it forever. This annoys me too. It probably annoys you. I'm so sorry. 
probably annoys you, but still, people people find me as of today. Go to my social blade. 2,000 people found me and subscribed to me today, right now. Those 2,000 people don't know about me. They don't know everything I've been through. And so I still, even on my Twitter, why does Nick have three channels? Why does Nick need so many channels? Wow, he's greedy. One channel with a million followers isn't enough. He just needs more money, you know? <clears throat> just people don't even know. <gasps> oh, I'm bur burping from the McDonald's, hiccuping from the cayenne pepper. So I remember when I went to Bethany's house, she, we actually, when we were having a conversation on our couch talking about what it's like to be a YouTuber and all the things we've been through. She brought up some of her OG followers sometimes get a little upset for her doing Q&As and repeating the same questions. They're like, we already know what your real name is. We already know that you have two sons. We already know that your favorite color is pink. You know, they already know this stuff. And But then she says to me, she's like, Nick, but every day I'm getting thousands of new people who don't know those things. In one month, there'll be 80,000 new followers who didn't know a darn thing about me. So I have to update repeatedly. It just kind of is how it is, unfortunately. I feel like I do repeat myself in my uh, Q&As. But still, some people don't know I'm married. Some people don't know that I lived in Colombia. Some people don't know I had a sloth. Some people don't know I got deported. Some people don't know that I had a talking parrot named Mr. Noodle, who I miss so much. <laughs> They just, you know, and they're not everyone will know everything. That's life. That's another reason I don't mind the the drama videos or what you call them, call it <laughs> parody. What do you? It's not a parody. They're really not adding anything to it. Like the um the one about like me versus Stephanie Sue. What would you call that type of video? Just I don't even know. I, but the point is, I don't mind stuff like that because there's people who probably never heard of me. That's their first v time learning about me. I'm not, and they're, you know, it's whatever. For example, Jacqueline Hill. I don't really watch her. She's a beauty guru that lately has been under heat, under fire for selling a lipstick that gave some people some some issues. I probably watched two of her videos in my life. And not even all the way full. Not I would I just don't care about makeup that much. I mean I get why people follow her. She's very good at makeup. She did something with Kim Kardashian, didn't she? She's pretty. She's very, very wealthy. That's fun to watch. But I just I don't I couldn't tell you the first thing about her. I just don't know her. But she got into all this little heat about her lipstick. And then I find myself watching people's reviews about the lipstick. Or I even followed her on Twitter, didn't I? Where's my phone? I think I followed her on Twitter because I want to be like, is she going to respond to this lipstick? You know what I mean? It's like people shouldn't get too upset with criticism because it it's a very odd thing on social media. It sometimes helps you to have some scandals or to have some type of drama or to have some type of misfortune and mishaps who knows it could even end you up in the white house it's a very funny world i remember i was talking to zach about this the other day because um who we were talking about oh yeah the whole um uh, be loves life drama and i was just like <clears throat> how you handle things determines a lot but still at the end of the day it's a very odd thing if i was a news anchor or an actor like Kevin Spacey and something came out that I did something and it's boom you lost your whole career Paula Dean said the n-word supposedly I don't even this was before my time I was a kid but um I still like her I still like her character her character which she plays on TV the bubbly southern woman making her mac and cheese with a million sticks of butter it just cracks me up <laughs> you know what I mean but she still lost everything and to this day, she's going to go down in history as being a racist. Is she racist? I don't know. I never heard her say the N-word. I never heard her defend it or lie about it. Or All I heard was a big apology and the fact that she got every single TV show ripped from her. Lost Food Network, lost her sponsors, and she just does nothing now. You know, had Paula Deen been a YouTuber and said the N-word, like Jeffree Star has actually been on tape saying it. And look at him. 
going just fine. Everyone loves him. Well, not everyone, but you know what I mean? It's like, I feel like YouTube, you can, people are more forgiving. <clears throat> Maybe it's because they hold YouTubers to a lower standard. You know, we just make videos. And at the same time too, I feel like, feel like people on YouTube, there's, the, no offense guys, I feel like some, some viewers are bored. They don't even care what you do. They just need something to watch. I think that's the sad truth. What do you think? Jacqueline, I mean, look at James Charles. Like, it's old news. People aren't still talking about <gasps> that whole Taddy thing. I think, if anything, people look at Taddy differently because she kind of, she tried, but it didn't really work. <laughs> she tried to tear, whether it was deliberate or out of good intentions. The end goal was still to let people know that James Charles is not who he says he is. And um, it didn't really... Did it make any difference? I don't know. So long story short, go ahead and roast me because I'm lucky because my standards are low here on YouTube. <laughs> we have low standards here and I don't care. <laughs> I'm joking. But still, it's very odd because then peep, there is a whole like canceled culture and people do come after you with a bat on social media. But it's it's not never ending. Eventually it people come around, especially if you just humble your heart. That's the problem with a lot of this. A lot of this is stretched out and milked. That whole thing with Trisha Paytas, she milked that for a month. She stretched that for a month posting breakdowns, posting posting all this random footage and backed up stuff deliberately to confuse people and to mock the situation. And she milked it. And you know what? Had she just humbled her heart, I mean, I feel like people would have been like, okay, it's over. The, literally, you go to her Instagram and people are still saying justice for Nick and stuff. I mean, it's like, that's the thing too. People need to humble their heart. And it goes away fast. Usually, had Paula Dean been a YouTuber and done that, I feel like it would be a lot different than a TV network. That's also the, the age group too. There's mostly young people on the computer. Yes, there's older people too. Hi guys. Hello, my older sloths. But I think that, I think YouTube is still mostly young adults and children children by children i mean like 18 19 20 my largest demographic is 26 to 28 18 to 24 and 25 to 32 are my makeup for like literally 80 percent maybe 90 percent of my viewers it's mostly young adults here so maybe that's also too why people get away with stuff and i don't know am i making sense or am i contra contradicting myself is hate a good thing on YouTube or is it not? I don't know. Oddly enough, here I am saying, go ahead, say what you want about me because at the end of the day, you're bringing me traffic to my channel. I think that's a, a healthy way to look at it so it doesn't actually depress me like it has in the past. But does it actually make people wanna watch me? It's hard to know, it's hard to say. Or am I getting all these subscribers on my other channels? I mean, this one's new, but because a video from two years ago is starting to pick up again and people are finding me through that. It's just, the, it's a bizarre phenomenon, YouTube, to be a YouTuber. It's not a movie that has a beginning and an end. It's not a story that you read in a textbook that has, you know, context, it has a rise and a fall and you can know all the main characters. It's a never ending story on this channel, truly. And people come to it at all different times and they will come to this channel even if it's two people a day. I mean, this as long as YouTube is alive, 50 years from now, there's going to be people watching this video. And 2,100. Will I be alive in 2,100? In 2,100, someone's going to be watching this. Hi. It's so weird to think about. And they're not going to care what mistake I made or cracking eggs on my head from 50 years ago. Do you think they're really gonna care? It's gonna in intrigue them and they're gonna be like, huh. That was weird, but oh well, it's in the past. What's he gotta say now, you know? It's very strange. 
I would encourage, I would encourage, I would encourage a lot of you to pick up the camera and start filming your life. You never know what could come of it, and you don't know when something will come of it. I mean, I know people who have tried YouTube. Ah, let's talk about me. I did YouTube for years and barely scrapped, scraped a hundred bucks out of it a month. Years. Years. 2014, 2015, 2016. 2017 is when I started the mukbangs. Right around the time that Trisha Paytas thing happened. That's when I started. I tried for years making vlogs, editing um, reviews, filming. I had a boyfriend channel with Orlin. It was called Nick and Orlin Raw because we were raw foodists at the time, but we called it raw because we were going to be raw. <laughs> you know, uncensored, unfiltered in that, which all we did was kiss a lot on camera. That didn't really take us anywhere. Um, we tried a vlogging channel. That didn't take us anywhere. Then I was a vegan channel. That took me somewhere, but... The vegan community is very small and um, a lot of the things did not pay well because I would show animals footage, animal suffering footage in the videos like graphic stuff from PETA. So I, I obviously didn't do it for money. Um, if I wanted to do something money I would have tr probably tried, I would have tried makeup. Shoot, I would have tried a reaction channel or something um, really popular. Mukbang wasn't a thing and luckily I just got the information about mukbang and here I am today. But anyways, I encourage anyone to pick up the camera and try. You don't know when you're going to take off. It took me three years, four years of making videos before I've discovered what I like to do and what people equally enjoy watching. It can't all be about me and can't all be about you. We both have to enjoy this. And I finally found this, but mukbang is not going to fly for most people. You know what I mean? Um, if you care about your health, you're not going to do this. If you're older, your metabolism is slower, you're not going to do this. If you are, especially a girl, you know, you care about your image, you want your pants to look good, you're not going to do this. Or if you do, it's going to be once a week, not even. Or you're going to do something else to make sure you don't get fat. Whether you exercise a lot, whether you throw up your food, whether you take some pills, whether you, who knows, you know, and you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? Am I having fun? Is this for me or now, or is it only for the viewer? Um, I think a lot of guys don't want to do this. They think it's odd. I think guys are less talkative than girls. So it's, this is my thing on YouTube, but it doesn't mean it's yours. I was just watching a video with Orlin about in a greenhouse garden doing single stem tomato planting beautiful greenhouse and he's he, Orland's just like oh yeah they're very wealthy and they I've watched all their videos they have this beautiful house in California and they put thousands of do thousands of dollars into their garden and they they're so good at gardening and they get a lot of views 50,000 views of this person picking a tomato 50,000 views of this person showing how to change your soil of your flower bed fit a hundred thousand views of Look at my new fly swatter. I mean, it's just, and that's their thing. I don't think they would do mukbang, and I certainly wouldn't be able to do that because I don't know the first thing about gardening, and I don't think it would make me very happy. I'm a very impatient person. So <laughs> I encourage all of you to grab the camera and find out what you want to do because, um, yeah, it's funny. And be careful because what you say is here for life. I mean, if you want to be in the real world workplace and you, if you have a professional career, I actually don't advise you to because you might slip up and that will come to haunt you. If you are in the nursing business, the lawyer business, the um, doctor business, the nursing, the um, if you are a president of an organization, if you're a teacher, if you are a public relations, if you're a advisor, if you're a counselor, if you're a therapist, if you're... I mean, all of these jobs, I don't know if you're going to want a YouTube channel because that might come to haunt you. If you work in government, if you have a political role in society. I think if, you, if you're just like a waiter or a server at a restaurant, you know, they don't really care what you say on Facebook. As a teacher, you, you know, they would care about that. Or if you have, if you're doing retail, casual, not like high end. If you're in high end, then I don't know. Am I just talking to talk or am I making sense? 
I knew the talking one would come to me. Hey, you, hey, Nick, when you're editing this, put this in the beginning because people are gonna think that I didn't talk much in this video because I was eating, I was so hungry. Now my mind is running. Here comes this mind, it's saying all this stuff. <laughs> Nick, let's edit this into the beginning. Keep on watching. Well, actually, no, I'll do it, I'll do it later. I'm gonna edit it myself. Never mind. Tell people when the talking starts, because people do care about that. Anywho, I am done with my rambles. I am done with my meal. This was delicious. Um, shout out to my husband who steamed me more healthy food. I really want to go on a roller coaster. We still haven't gone to Knobles. I've been watching roller coaster videos on YouTube for like a good hot second. The tallest, fastest wooden roller coasters. The top rated, I love wooden roller coasters. I really want to ride El Toro. Have you heard of that in Six Flags? That looks good. Knobles, which is, you know, near my house, my parents' house. Knobles has something called the Phoenix. It has been ranked among the world's best roller coasters, especially definitely America's top 10 roller coasters, the Phoenix. And it's not super high, it's not super fast, but it's known for its air time, you can fly out of your seat. Mm. It's just a classic and well-made and it's just fun. I've been on that a million times. But I want to go to these other places. I want to ride, oh, there's one called, <clears throat> it's, it's in South Korea. What is it called? Exxon T? It's a weird name. It's a weird name of a, for a roller coaster. Not Exxon, that's the gas station. What's it called? I forget. But it's there. El Toro, which is at Six Flags. Oh, I want to ride Boulder Dash. But I've read reviews. Some people say it makes their neck hurt, like it's really rattly. Like your head is whipped around. I don't like that. Oh, I really want to try the Voyager. The vo No, it's the Voyage or the Voyager. I think it's the Voyage. That looks really fun. And the Beast. Have you heard of the, the Beast? I think that's the, the longest wooden roller coaster. Oh. <gasps> World record. Oh, there's one in China too. That looks amazing. I forget what that's called. It's like a very long name. And then of course, El Toro. That, that looks awesome. Well, I am done. Thank you for your time. Welcome to my brand new channel. I will be here daily. Give me another day or two to rest. I wanna see how this pays because i that's the, the point of this, let's face it. Someone had to pay for this. Someone has to pay their bills. If I could do this for free and live like a king, I would. Not that I need to live like a king, not that I want to live like a king, you know, but we all have to work and make money. That's the real world. So anyways, if this channel doesn't end up paying like everyone else, I am going to, I don't know, make another one and delete this one or just give up and keep using my other two. And I don't know what I'll do. Let's just cross your fingers. Knock on wood. That all is worth it in the end. So I need to find out how this works. I've never gotten a penny out of this yet. I, I need to figure out if it set up my bank account, make it all correct. Am I too open with you guys? I feel like other YouTubers don't talk about this. And that's it. So I'll see you in a couple of days here on this channel and I'll check, my, check out my videos on my other channels as well. If you're new to me and you randomly found this video, hi, my name is Indicacado Avocado and I have a crazy life and I love to eat. Thank you for your time. Was I boring or did I keep you company? I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Bye.